rolling. Back to skincare products and skincare regimes. So let's just go into the different kinds of products that there are out there. These are again, very, very, very general. There's so many different ones out there, but just to give you a clue in onto each one. So skincare products, so obviously cleansers, you might use a moisture bar, not soap, to dehydrating. Um, you can usually find this with certain skincare lines. Cleansers are very in texture. Some are creamy, some are balmy, so gel cleansers are foamy, and some have a smooth feel. Um, I also notice that people don't feel clean unless their cleanser performs the way that they like. So if, even if they've got dry skin, if it's foamy, um, and it makes them feel clean, they might be more inclined for that. Uh, for me, myself, I like a balm, so it just depends on your uh, preference or um, whatever is going to be the most effective and quick and easy for you to use uh, to get everything removed. And some people do double cleanses, don't forget that. Um, all kinds of options out there in terms of cleansers, but this is just a general, okay? Remember to be careful about alcohol content with cleansers. Take a look at it, look at the ingredients, see if there's a lot of alcohol because it can strip your skin and um, it's not a good thing. So just check into what are the ingredients and see if there's also anything that can be an irritant or allergen. So check into that as well. Let's go to the next one. All right, let's start with exfoliants. Um, obviously there's been so many advancements over the years from um, alpha hydroxy acid, which is a derivative of sugar cane. It usually helps remove uh, skin that sits on the surface. Um, I remember back in the day when the favorite product was like uh, apricot scrub. I don't know if any of you are with me on that. Um, watch that one because like I said, anything that has really sharp edges to it, I've seen it get lodged in the pores and things like that. So you don't, you want to make sure that you're not using anything that will um, scratch or get lodged or damage the skin in any way. So exfoliants should be gentle. I love the ones that kind of burst as you as you put them on the skin or, or roll over them, roll over your skin gently. But exfoliating your skin is is great because it definitely does help product get accepted better. And you know our skin turns over naturally about every 30 days or so. But if we have had a lot of sun or we've had a lot of dehydration, it can really pile up in layers. So getting that exfoliant that agrees with your skin, that doesn't strip it or hurt it, is key in order to make your skin smoother and feel good. And you can also do things like shave your face to get some of the dead skin off. You can use machines. There's a million ways to use an exfoliant but you have to find what's right for you um, and make sure that you're not being harsh. That's the, the biggest key to anything that I can give you. Be gentle with yourself. Just an, a side note, if you are oily skinned, it can feel really good to exfoliate, but watch out that you don't overly exfoliate. Some people just love it so much they want to exfoliate every day. And then again, because of all that stimulation, you can stimulate your oil glands to overproduce oil. Um, and that is not a good thing. You don't want oilier skin. And if you've got dry skin or mature skin, you also want to be careful that you're not rubbing on it all the time because you want to be gentle on it as well. Uh, if you, we don't want more lines and wrinkles and it's already going to come natural. So be gentle with that. And, um, you know, twice a week is good. Once a week is okay. Uh, you have to gauge it to what's comfortable for you and like there's all kinds of stuff you can get at the spa they can do peels they can do all kinds of things to take off dead layers uh, so explore and find out what's going to work for you and see but exfoliating is absolutely awesome for especially refreshing the surface of your skin so that especially can accept more product and more ingredients in um, because tons of layers of dead skin can really build up on there and it makes it harder for your skincare to do the work that it needs to do Moisturizer, again, personal preference comes into play here. Um, I love the feeling of something with a little bit of heaviness to it. Maybe like a little bit less than I used to. I double moisturize. I use a, a super hydrating moisturizer and then I go over it with a, a, a richer moisturizer and then I sometimes infuse oil into my foundation in order to get even more. So 
depending on what you're comfortable doing and what feels good for you, personal preference is going to be absolutely key here. How it feels, how it smells, how it feels going on, and then how it sits on the skin. Those are all important things. If you're putting a moisturizer on and it's making your skin too oily afterwards, you're going to have to lighten up and go more hydrating because there are moisturizers that really lean towards the hydrating side and then there's moisturizers that are really, really rich that are, you know, almost like oil on the skin. So depending on what you're trying to achieve, sometimes makeup artists, for example, go into really rich moisturizers when they're doing something on camera so that it looks very dewy. It might not be something you can do every day, but it might look good for that one shot on camera. So you can really play with things and adjust it according to the needs of what you're doing and who you are. And remember, like as far as dehydration is concerned, you can be dehydrated and be oily. You can be dehydrated and dry. You can be dehydrated and acneic. You can be dehydrated in any other skin type. And so you could feel dry, but you're actually lacking water, not oil. So you have to understand the difference. That's why we did the dehydration test, which you guys hopefully did with me in the videos gone by. So just make sure that you're doing all of these things so that you could figure out, am I dry? like lacking oil or I'm actually lacking water or am I lacking both? Because if you're putting a rich moisturizer on and you're getting crazy amounts of shine mid afternoon, it's likely that you're dehydrated and you're definitely not dry. So keep that in mind. You might need oil control <laughs> moisturizers. There are those out there too, if you've got a lot of oil. So if that's the case for you, then um, keep that in mind. But if you've got mature, drier skin, you don't want an oil control product because that can make your skin look a little duller. So you want to go warming it up and making it look moisturized and juicy. That's a different ball game. So you have to differentiate between what can do what for your skin. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will help you a little bit decide what's going to work for you. A nice blend is good. Hydrating and a little bit of, um, you know, good uh, oil product, oil ingredients that can help to emulsify your skin. Those are awesome, but depending on if you're oily, dry, or normal, we'll see. We're going to go into skin type soon, but keep these in mind as we're going through all of these different products. Eye creams, gels, masks, of course, there's so many. <laughs> and so very much is age related. Uh, after 30, things change a lot, so just keep all that in mind. Um, eye creams and gels and masks around the eye area that product deals with a very delicate area like this skin around here you guys is really really delicate one hint um, application wise is to warm it up on your fourth finger your fourth finger is your gentlest finger and just gently tapping it around the bone area because your eyes are very hot if you've ever put on an eye cream and it burns put it around the bone area because it likes to seep in towards the heat of your eye and that will help with that. So keep that in mind when you're um, playing with eye creams or eye gels or anything that you're, you're doing around the eye areas. They have like, you know, obviously like masks that you could just place underneath the eye now and a lot of makeup artists use those now. Um, so there's a multitude of options just make sure that you remember that your eyes are hot and it can seep the product up so if any burning is going on take it off and reapply it in the areas that I'm explaining and it should solve the problem for you all right let's talk about serums and anti-aging products well there's so many out there um, can these products turn back the uh, hands of time um, I have seen improvements with certain products, but be careful of your expectations, I believe. Uh, aside from cosmetic surgery, most products will offer a temporary and subtle solution to the effects of aging. There are machines that you can use at home now, which are, um, you know, really, really talked about. And there's a lot of people that super believe in them. And there are some great ones out there. You're going to have to trial and error that. Um, there's a million reviews on YouTube with that. So just keep that in mind. We don't know what the future holds either. So I'll never say never, but I, I encourage you to understand that it's likely subtle improvements. Um, most of the time it's to do with you're hydrating some surface lines in there, but hey, like 
like I said, never say never. If you've had a really, really dramatic change with any kind of um, product, eye products especially, make sure you list them below because I'm sure people will read them and would love to hear about them. But just manage your expectations. And when you get sold, you know, um, some jewelry that costs you $250 for a tiny bottle like this, hoping that it's gonna change everything, manage your expectations because likely it might do a little bit to improve but not completely transform that's more of a surgery thing usually or some kind of you know treatment laser treatment or something to that effect so keep that in mind manage your expectations and the texture of what you put around your eye area counts so again like heavy oils and things like that are going to be more emollient usually lean towards people who are drier um, and more hydrating, more water-based eye creams. I mean, they're good for everybody. And you can even layer. You can layer hydrating and you can layer uh, a creamier substance and masks and things like that can be on top of that. So it doesn't just have to be one. You can do more than one. So explore those a little bit. And I hope this list has been helpful. There's a few other things I want to talk about before we wrap this one. Okay, let's talk about masks. There's just a massive variety, anything that you want to accomplish. I love a good hydrating mask that replenishes the water in our skin. If it's um, a once a week ritual, at least, a deep cleansing mask is beneficial to re remove some of the surface toxins. I recommend good salon facials wherever possible. There's some really good hydrating ones too. Um, so many to choose from. There are clarifying masks, there are detoxifying masks, there are anti-aging masks, seaweed masks, cucumber masks, I mean, it's endless. Uh, with so much variety, how in the heck do you choose? So to try to stay within the same line as much as possible, just because they tend to make ingredients that like to work together, if you can. I mean, it's not absolute necessity. A mask can have a very active ingredient in it, so keep that in mind. Be sure not to over mask. If you over activate, again, those oil glands, it will stimulate more oil production if you have oily skin. So just watch out for the activation and um, choose carefully with your masks. Try them out. If they burn you in any kind of way, remove them immediately. It, it likely means that you're sensitive to it. Sometimes when you're really dehydrated, anything on your skin can burn. So gauge that. So it could be good, but it just burns because anything touching your face burns. So decide what's happening there and then go from that. Okay, so quickly to cover ingredients, there's so many common ingredients in skincare. Obviously go to internet, do your research, mineral oil, all the things that they have. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to learn about products and the industry in general and find out about ingredients. Most companies list ingredients, so write some down, go look them up, find out what purpose they serve, which ingredients have a good reputation and why. You can never have too much information, um, so go for it. Indulge in info and try to figure out what is going to absolutely work. Best. So your assignment for my makeup artist to be is going to be all about research. You need to find three drugstore lines and three higher end lines that you like. I want you to use the list above, five products in each category, and um, if you want to photograph each one, you can, and explain in a bit of a report at least six lines all of the products that you choose key active ingredients in the product lines you chose and what benefits they have. I also want you to write down um, the price of that product. This assignment will help you uh, to determine skincare lines, active ingredients, particular issues, ages, and budgets. It will help with all of it. So keep that in mind as you attempt this makeup artist to be and don't hold back. Go for as much research as you can handle. Okay, makeup artist, that's it for today. We're going to go into tomorrow and we're going to talk about skin types and skin issues. Make sure you're there. We'll see you there. Bye for now.